Alright. Here is uh, some of the issues you would encounter putting a Chevy putting a Chevy 350 in a uh, 240 Datsun. Yes. See the oil filter right there. These are block hugger headers. Um, of course, it's a nut. That's a nut. Good. It'll let me. That stack of washers. I'm gonna move to this side. Moving the engine back an inch and helping with this issue. See, see that right there? That's the steering setup on this side. It's not too bad. Um, but again, there's the starter right there and the frame rails. It's got like a reverse Mustang suspension. So, anyways, with the frame rails right there, it's really tight. Frame rail right here, too, it's really tight. So, you can't do shorty headers, it just won't fit. A log manifold doesn't flow enough, and with proper placement, um, the block hugger headers are about the only thing that'll fit. Also, next week I'll be installing a drive shaft uh, from the edge of this transmission here. You can see it's a rusty pile of garbage, but it'll work. Now, this is a Turbo 350 transmission. Um, that's bolted, of course. It's it's a it's not a real conversion kit. It's just something somebody pieced together. So I'm gonna have to work with it. Take away or add whatever pieces I need. Anyways, if you start right here and go to that flange right there, that's a Datsun R180, which is seven and a half inches. Only thing I know with seven and a half inches is a six cylinder 66, you know, 67, 68 Mustang. Um, and anyway, seven and a half inches is nowhere near enough. So when that finally blows, I'll replace it with a shortened eight, uh, Ford inch, Ford 8.8 or something. So, but what I did is I bought a Corvette trans, transaxle, um, not transaxle, drive shaft. If you calculate this, it's going to be 30 and a half inches. You take away about 2 inches, and about where my thumb is is where the U-joint is going to be on your average average flange, right? So, 30 and a half minus 2 is 28 and a half. And then the flange over there is going to take about an inch. So it comes out to 20 to 7 and a half, 26 and a half, because you need a little bit of slip on the slip wheel. You need about a quarter inch to half inch. A Corvette drive shaft for an automatic Dana 36 Corvette 84 through 96 C4 is 27, 26 and a half uh, aluminum drive shaft and that'll work perfectly. So I'll show you guys as soon as that gets here. I also need a Neepco. Uh, I'll put the part number in the description so you guys can see, but I need a Neepco um, adapter for this to be able to use that Corvette drive shaft as 1310 U joints. The reason I'm not going to bother making a hybrid Chevy Datsun drive shaft is because Datsun, in, in their infinite wisdom, had non-replaceable U-joints. They they really thought their shit would last forever. I mean, that's just dumb. But anyways, I mean, these cars weren't exactly built with a lot of power. Uh, if I had an R200 transaxle off, or not a transaxle, a center, center chunk, out of a, uh, a later Datsun 300Z, then that would hold a lot more power, but I don't feel like messing with that. So once that blows, that's getting a live axle conversion. That way it holds up to some serious power. Well, stay tuned. Hopefully as soon as I get the uh, Corvette drive shaft, I'll fit it and make sure it fits. It's got a 27 spine yoke, just like this Turbo 350. I might need another yoke, but 50 bucks, can't complain. I'll just put the new joints in it and go rock and roll.